Now we're going to consider the Gospel, which is Luke 16, 1 to 13. And again, uh, it's a very Lucan theme. How to deal well with wealth and how to help the poor. This is the uh, parable uh, of the dishonest steward. Now, it might be helpful to uh, realize that these stewards, you know, they manage the, the property for somebody. And so he's looking at that olive orchard and he's saying, that's going to produce a, about 35 bushels or barrels of oil. Number. So he's going to write down there somehow 30 and then say to the guy, 35. The other five he keeps for himself, see. And so when he starts knocking off these prices here, you see, because he's so smart, he realizes it's worth taking a short-term hit for a long-term gain. Our Lord is saying, are you that smart? Do you take a little short-term hit and stay out of sin for a long-term gain? This guy's smarter than you are. And this is only for money. Or are you lazy about prayer, sloppy about sin, sloppy about what movies you watch, sloppy about the way you look at the other sex, you know? Why don't you cut it out? It's worth taking a short-term hit for a long-term gain. And that's the... Uh, isn't our Lord wonderful? Who would come up with an example like this? Can't, why can't you be as smart as that crook? It's beautiful. Okay. So, the parable. Uh, he also said to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, or steward, they call that in this text. Um, and he... Uh, was squandering his property. So the uh, rich man called him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. Now the guy's in a jam. So what does he say? See, what shall I do now now that my master is taking away the position of steward from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg, my God, I've been dishing out this stuff. Now I'm going to have to turn around and ask him for some. I can't do that. I know what I'll do. So that when I'm removed from office, they may welcome me into their homes. He's still not thinking about his master. thinking about himself. But if I give these people all a break, and the break is what? Knocking off the percentage of the tax that I was going to take for myself anyway. So I'm going to take a short-term hit. The master's going to get the due allocation of what he should get. And I'm going to have friends because I, I, um, I dealt smart with my master's money and didn't take it for myself, even though I planned on that. But now, isn't that, this is the way our Lord talks. Then he says, are you that smart? Are you that smart? You know, you're unfaithful to your wife. And uh, if I call you to judgment today, you're going to be in trouble. Aren't you smart enough to know to get out of that relationship and and start living a life that's pleasing to me, get to confession, get it cleaned up, and then, you see, they'll take you into my kingdom if you're smart. Now, a part of being smart is to be enlightened. And to be enlightened means to pray, because... If you're not praying, you don't think, I could be in hell. I could be deprived of God. And if you know God, the thought of being deprived of Him for all eternity is horrifying. So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to quit sinning. I'm going to get out of this mess so that I'm ready to go into the kingdom. That's the point of the parable. So you see, it's using wealth as are almost all the texts we've looked at in this Sunday, but using it as a symbol. So the text goes then, see? The steward said, what shall I do? I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. 
So he called in his master's debtors one by one, so nobody knows who's going on. He's talking to one, the other guy's waiting outside the door. And he says, now, how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of olive oil. He said, here's your promissory note. Sit down and write one for 50. Okay. Now, was the whole other 50 supposed to go to him? Or is he now even cutting down on what the owner should get? Our Lord is not specific. But certainly he's willing to take a short-term hit for a long-term gain, which is eternal life. And so, he says then, you see, uh, uh, oil. Now, then he said to another, and you, how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred ichors, or cores, of wheat. It's a measurement. And they tell us exactly what it is, but it doesn't make any difference. It's a, a core is about uh, 10 or 12 bushels. So a guy owes here a hundred bushels or a thousand bushels of wheat. And he said to him, here's your promissory note. Write one for 80. Now the master found out about this. And what does the master do? He commends the dishonored steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in their dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. They're going to have buddies in this world. You want buddies in heaven? What are you doing? These people are smarter than you are. And they got nothing except money to look forward to. You see, I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth. That is all wealth is a little bit dishonest, somewhere along the chain. But give some away so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwelling. How does it fail? Well, you die for one thing. And then it's just good business. And that's what our Lord is saying. Can't you be as smart as these people are doing, are cheating just to make money and getting out of jail by cheating on their, their employer? by writing off the, you know, making the debt smaller. Can't you be that smart when the issue is eternal life? Taking a short-term hit for long-term gain? Aren't you that smart? Don't you know where you're going? If your life is in union with God, do you know what that's like? Isn't it worth knocking off a few sins now so that you can get there? That's what he's... Isn't, He's so beautiful in his parables. Nobody else would dare say a thing like this. And so, the person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. So if you start by lying, you know, and taking ten bucks out of the till, if you keep that job for ten years, you're lying through your teeth and you're taking a couple of thousand out of the till every week. See? If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, which is the way that uh, the, the text runs, you see? Uh, the word is mamona. You see? If you're unjust with, uh, you know, with unjust mamona, you see? If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? Now it comes. No servant can serve two masters. you got to face it. You're either going to serve the world and yourself and your comfort, or you're going to serve me. You can't do both. You just can't do both. So, either he'll hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. God and mammon. I wonder how they translate it over here. Yeah. Uh, you cannot be the slave both of God and money. You understand? So how does God, how does Satan work? He gets people in love with money. And they cheat, cheat, cheat. And then finally there's no way out. And they're such, in such habit of having an abundance of money going to Bermuda for the summer, whatever they want, the winter, whatever they want. They just can't give it up. 
they die that way, they're in trouble. How are you going to explain to the Lord that you stole all that money? You can't. And so, that's the parable. Very beautiful and very uh, powerful. So, how do we uh, apply it? Well, if somebody comes to me and says, I stole 25 bucks from the till in the drugstore where I work, I say, first thing, give back the $25. You can just slip it back in the till, but it's not your money. And you will be held responsible for it when you die. It's just good business. Give it back now. Take a short-term hit for a long-term gain. It just makes sense. Uh, and if, suppose then I stole $30,000 from my corporation. Well, now you got a problem. How are you going to get $30,000 back in the till and nobody noticed, you see? So you pray for a way to get it back to them because they're the rightful owners. But there's no way you can give it to the poor because the poor are always a viable option. But um, you've got to get rid of that, that money or that car or that whatever that you stole. And people don't think any other thing about it. If you go into a car dealer and the salesman makes a mistake and that car was really $5,000 more than you paid for it, you just run off with the car. Whoopee! You know you've cheated that car dealer out of $5,000. And so does Jesus know it. When are you going to make that up? Make for yourself. What did he just tell us? You see? Make for yourselves. I'll read it again. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth is what? The beatific vision. You've got to try to make a movie of it and sell it? I mean, what are you going to do? You don't even know what to do because you've never tried to love God. Then you're in big, bad shape. You see how Luke's gospel is very powerful in his sensitivity uh, to the poor. A lot like our present Pope. You see? He's been doing things and giving stuff to the poor and getting stuff organized because... They're Christ. They're Christ. So first, don't cheat. And second, give to the poor. Then when you die, you've got a whole slew of friends. I think of that once in a while. You know, I gave tiny coins and stuff when I lived in Italy when I was very poor, or India, or some places in Africa. And I, yeah, I didn't think of it. But once in a while, it crosses my mind. The Lord's going to be there with a big bucket of be money because I'm not going to need money in heaven but it'll be something here it's all back it's yours hundredfold just good business to be not only honest but generous it's just good business so that's the message for this Sunday Amen, Amen.